Ya. Good morning. One more V. One V is Vivek. Another V is Vaishnav. So Vaishnav and his good morning, sir. Good morning. So today uh, we we continue. Actually, let us not start. Already ozone started. So we are oozing out. So let us start the same ozone. So as a recapitulation, as a small recap, let us have a glance over the slides what we have studied yesterday. This is the uh, ozone structure. Uh, just to draw, uh, keeping in mind its color and relation to the water and oxygen. Okay, right. Now this one. Already over. Important sphere of ozone, stratosphere. Now about the information. Now different spheres of our. Uh, about uh, above the uh, troposphere and this is regarding the preparation part of ozone now today's session okay physical properties of ozone so light bluish in color okay and the pungent smell fishy smell we don't like it but it has a pungent smell it condenses at minus 120 degree centigrade, very low. When you, when, you, when you maintain the low temperature, then gas becomes liquid. That time, it is also same blue color only, but dull blue color, okay, liquid color. On further cooling, it freezes or hardens to give dark violet color crystals. That means color is in the, in, in the, in the shade of uh, blue or the violet only, in that range only. So dull, uh, dark, uh, that all those will happen. But the most important last part is thermodynamically it is very unstable hmm? because whenever uh, we convert oxygen to ozone, the equation is, I will go to once again equation, you please see the equation in, uh, in the center I have, I have written 3O2 giving 2O3, 3O2 giving 2O3. So if you look at the balanced chemical equation, 3 moles of oxygen gas is becoming the 2 moles of ozone gas. Both are in the gaseous condition, gaseous state or the gaseous phase. But we are moving from 3 moles of gas to the 2 moles of gas. 3 moles of gas to the 2 moles of gas. So gas have more randomness. That means we are going from more random to the less random. Delta S is becoming negative. And second point is delta H is positive. So these two conditions are quite opposite for our famous thermodynamics equation, delta Z equal to, uh, what is the famous equation, delta H minus T into delta S. So there if you substitute these values, so we get delta Z in the positive. Therefore, uh, ozone is thermodynamically unstable. That is clearly uh, done in the uh, what laboratory. So highly unstable. That's why more concentration will be highly explosive or dangerous. Uh, our body is not fit enough for the ozone, only for the oxygen. Second important property of our ozone, oxidizing nature or the oxidizing action. So the one who supplies O, they are called as oxidizing agents according to the classical definition. Here O3 is supplying oxygen. So it is the best, not only normal oxidizing agent, best oxidizing agent. Why? Because when O3 converts into O2 and O, first of all it is a, it is a, what it is supplying oxygen. Second is when it converts into O2 and O, that O is called as what? Single O, nascent oxygen, which is highly reactive. So that also will help enhance the oxidation reaction. So because of these two reasons, supplier of O2 and the liberation of nascent oxygen, which is highly reactive, it is the best and the powerful oxidizing uh, uh, what agent. This property we make use in many areas in our day-to-day -day life that we slowly we discuss. Okay, so starting from the house household to the malls, malls to the laboratory in the space. So wherever we require, we are using uh, its property that is oxidizing property of ozone. Some samples I have brought. Okay, 
so oxidizing pbs2 pbso4 hmm? so ki2 i2 so all these are examples for what oxidation reactions of ozone with some other uh, chemicals hmm? and especially the iodine is there no that iodine that iodine reaction we make use uh, in the titration titration comes under the volumetric analysis so 12th class there are some 2 to 3 volumetric analysis are there so there we measure in terms of volume one liquid is taken in the burette the other liquid is taken in the pipette so both are exactly measured then we go for the titration then by knowing some data we will calculate what is asked so all that comes under the practical part of what uh, chemistry in that it is called as what uh, volumetric analysis in that again sub uh, topic quantitative analysis so all this we learn so there uh, we make use of this knowledge okay so the liberation of iodine okay is uh, checked uh, wherever iodine contents are and contents are there even uh, in our common salt iodine is there okay it is not in the pure form it is in the compound form potassium iodide so it is called iodized salt so that iodine content he is checked whether iodine is there or not. There, there, is a, there, are, there are some tests in the uh, quantitative analysis. So for that, uh, we use this equation. Okay, we learn only when, when the practical starts. Okay, so using what? Using sodium thiosulfate Na two S two O three. So that is taken uh, either in the burette or in the pipette, depend upon the which uh, OA, which one RA we have taken. Okay, so there we carry out some reactions. Oxidation reduction in total they are called what redox reactions or the redox titrations. There are totally two titrations for the eleventh and twelfth. One is uh, acid base titrations, other one is redox titrations. Acid base titration we learn in the eleventh class practical, whereas redox we learn in the twelfth class practical. Okay, so this comes under the redox titration. So oxidizing agent is what ozone. Okay, so all those we use knowledge. So ultimately what is our aim? Our aim is to find out iodine content present in the uh, given chemical or food stuff or whatever it may be. So using the sodium thiosulfate, just have a look. This equation is not asked in the examination, but only thing is what? Uh, ozone is made use uh, to analyze iodine content in the uh, chemicals or the everyday requirement. That is the important area. It also oxidizes NO2 to N2O5. Okay. So this equation also is very useful important important equation okay so the same equation is used for the next uh, uh, light green color uh, slide that is a depletion of ozone layer so already we learnt uh, yesterday only ozone is our natural umbrella okay if umbrella gets holes then directly we get sunlight or uh, directly we get the water whenever you go in the rain using the uh, umbrella where pores are there holes are there so then 50% uh, we water, we get water, okay, so we will become wet, so no use of that umbrella, but some relief, some, some relief is there, but if many holes are there in the umbrella, then no use, better to go directly in the rain only, like that. So umbrella is given by the nature, but the umbrella is, has to be protected by human beings, but there are some reasons, uh, many reasons are there, but here with reference to the group 16, we are learning here. So ozone layer is depleted, destroyed, okay, thickness is reduced, okay. So it is because of what? Because of nitrogen oxides. So most of the nitrogen oxides, either from industry or from the vehicles, they go into the atmosphere. So there, so they react with the ozone. So they are, uh, you please see the equation part also. So when ozone, that means what? It is, what is the ozone depletion? Means what? The amount of ozone is becoming less. That is the meaning. Holes, what is holes here? Holes is not, hole is created there in the uh, stratosphere, okay, not that meaning. Meaning is in that area where we have the uh, oxides of nitrogen, that area reaction starts with the ozone. So some amount of ozone is eaten up or the reacted, so it becomes less. That is called quantity in that area is less. That is called as the ozone hole, that we say. Not hole, what we, uh, in the paper or the cloth, not like that, okay. So in the in the in the chemical sense, it is the amount of ozone becoming less year by year due to the human activities. Okay, so one main uh, one of the main reasons is what uh, most of the nitrogen oxides immediately react to the ozone and they consume ozone. Okay, though oxygen is formed, 
But oxygen already we have in the troposphere, but we want ozone to get relief from the ultraviolet radiations. So because of this, so if ozone is eaten up by the other chemicals, then we don't get the ozone. So oxygen is there, we breathe. At the same time, what about our skin? What about our, what about our soil? So that area is affected. Therefore, ozone layer has to be protected. This is our moral responsibility. One more, oxide of nitrogen, nitrous oxide. It is giving two troubles. Trouble number one, uh, eating uh, ozone layer and trouble number two, global warming. It traps the heat radiations. Okay. So, if the particular area is having more amount of nitrous oxide, then that area is warm than the normal. Okay. So, every year, reports have said that uh, there is an increase in the temperature and already you might have heard or seen or read in the newspapers. So, all those data nowadays available everywhere. Okay. So, uh, there is a one uh, data at the bottom I have written. The human activity continuously increases the N2O concentration of the atmosphere. There is a 0.25% increase every year. 0.1 only is uh, trouble nowadays. Now it is 0.25. So still you are not becoming aware. Again we are going for new new vehicles. Okay. New factories. New developments. Nothing to say. Okay. Right. This is the third reason for the ozone depletion, chlorofluorocarbons, okay, freons, coolants. So nowadays we depend upon the refrigerator, refrigerator or air conditions. In the in, in the entire school, computer room is fully air conditioned, and some important rooms also in air conditioned. Malls are air, air conditioned, railways, airplanes, okay, bus, everywhere we we find air conditions are the cooling systems in the diaries. We have the large, uh, huge uh, uh, rooms are there. So they are called as uh, coolants, where they store milk, uh, cream, uh, butter uh, for a long time. So that's okay, but uh, other part we have to see. Okay. So this goes via free radical mechanism. So this I already explained last year, free radical mechanism part okay, of the methane and the uh, chlorine. In the same way, here also chain initiation, chain propagation and chain Termination will happen and in short I have given so how the chlorofluorocarbons will eat away the ozone. Okay. So we have to be very careful. So if you go back to our uh, uh, ancestors planning, okay, then we will be safe otherwise suffering is guarantee. Now one more ozone smog in the, smog of, in the form of smog. Smog is a combination of the fog and the smoke. Smoke plus fog, smog. Okay. So this we experience where uh, more number of vehicles are there. So normally in the metro, we find more number of vehicles. Okay, find more number of factories. Near Delhi, Noida is there. Okay, Rajasthan and Kolkata. Okay, Bangalore also nowadays uh, due to the heavy traffic, uh, Silicon City, all those important uh, hospitals, important colleges, everything is there in Bangalore only. So they are not developing any other part of Karnataka. Only Bangalore is developed. So therefore, all these reasons makes uh, what. A smog, especially during morning hours, when there is a cold atmosphere is there, it will condense all that uh, uh, smoke given by and uh, ozone formation, all that uh, water. They will become th thick layer, up to 10 o'clock thick layer is there, slowly, slowly it will disappear. But that morning 10 o'clock, no. So if you go in the smog area, we get cough, common cold, allergy, okay, lung problems, all those breathing problems. So especially in the Bangalore, uh, doctors have reported that. Around 40% uh, uh, cough, sinus, uh, running nose problems are due to the dust given by the vehicles. Straight away they are given the report. So now it is left to us. Okay. So all these are problems of what? Uh, industrialization or progress development. Now this is the picture I have taken from the Germany. Okay. Now you can see Germany looking so clean, very clean. This is because of the gift of coronavirus. Okay. Coronavirus has made us to not to move here and there. So we are confined to one particular area. So we have become what? Localized persons. Electron is not moving. How electron moves in the benzene ring? No. It is called delocalization. Now we are not becoming delocalized. Only in our area only. We are moving in our house, in our area. So because of the one month, two month, three month, six months lockdown. So vehicles are stopped. You can see the clear picture. How Earlier, Germany was full of smog, smoke, dust. Now, this recent picture is uh, floating in the internet. Okay, how beautiful Germany is looking. 
every car is seen clearly from the sky it is called uh, uh, drone camera so that is what so when we stop using vehicles sky becomes very clear so information is given at the extreme left side hmm? okay this is survey done this is the survey done now please this slide beautiful slide extreme left see the city how it was earlier for only one month lock some clarity was there the, this this uh, oh, first picture it is the first picture here and at the bottom here so continuous uh, three four months of lockdown made still more clear very clearly all buildings are seen from the top maybe around some around uh, uh, 10 to 15 kilometers okay or from uh, uh, near the clouds okay that camera is taken and you see your Delhi picture okay so I'll remove this, my, this slide here this side so that you can see easily the slide hmm? so uh, you can see the uh, Delhi before and after hmm? so beautiful monument so how it was before the lockdown highly thick clouds are there now clearly we can see you will enjoy the life okay all these because of what lockdown this picture I have selected from the Malaysia okay see how, how many buildings are there full of concrete forest so now it is clear due to the people are in the house only they are not moving so you can see the uh, here, what, uh, uh, snow snow mountains clearly with naked eyes no need to use the any instrument here okay so very beautiful pictures in the net this is our Indian I have taken from India also the left one is from Punjab okay so people have seen the Himalayan belt from Jalandhar only earlier when you go to close to Himalaya Nainital there we, we never used to see the, uh, the, the what, Himalayan belt Aisa, Aisa. so because of the uh, pollution but now even from the Jalandhar so this we have seen in the paper also a small clip was there so Himalaya I see now due to clear sky that was the clipping in the newspaper Hindu and uh, left side it is the Himach Himachal Pradesh beautiful uh, uh, scenery okay from Himachal Pradesh uh, Punjab so all these because of what uh, smoke is less in the atmosphere nowadays now this is what regarding the ozone structure so in different form I have written using the bond parameters and it is the I also written the resonance hybrid structure of what uh, ozone so double bond is not towards left side not towards right side it is a resonance hybrid bond length is same 1.278 angstrom minute same length okay earlier we thought one bond is lengthier one bond is smaller now when we when we discover the, the topic that is resonance then we have drawn the hybrid structure for the molecules okay it is due to what delocalization of electrons especially the pi electrons now we will come to the uses of ozone ozone I told I told the oxidation property is made use okay uh, one best is water for the decoloration for the deodorization for the disinfection and for the oxidation okay so whatever waste is given from the home uh, it will go to the uh, outside city so that water in the form water drainage uh, bathroom, bathroom drainage all that water is treated using the ozone and certain chemicals okay that is made fit for the use earlier it was used only for the feed purposes now we are facing shortage of water so even for drinking also it is supplied but after the chemical treatment thoroughly they treat it so when they check the small sample water in the laboratory fit for drinking then only they will send this is happening not in the small cities happening in the uh, metros where we have the multi stored buildings apartments so to supply water for the nearly 100 plus apartments in one particular area from the some from two to three borals is it is uh, insufficient so plan your plan is whatever from the same apartment from the hundred apartments how much water is going that they are collecting that they are treating same water they are circulating plus extra water from the municipality or the uh, water board so all this is just to meet the water scarcity so disinfection so ozone kills it is a strong so it, it kills the microorganisms and it is it is uh, there is there is survey about the ozone and in the in the ozone atmosphere nearly uh, 160 varieties of uh, micro organisms will become inactive okay so that's why ozone is the best germicide antimicrobial anti micro organisms so for that also they are using and uh, already I said about the oxidation to remove the color to convert to some other forms so these are what some important uses of ozone and there is a therapy known as ozone therapy especially in the 
dental clinic. So whenever we have the cavities or a plague, then uh, gum problems, that time we approach the dental doctor, dentist. Okay. So earlier what we used to do, we used to uh, we used to remove, we used to eliminate that uh, that particular area using surgery techniques. Okay. Now why to eliminate? Why to remove that area teeth? So what they do? They apply ozone water or the ozone gas directly. They apply. Okay. Under some special precautions they take. The doctors knows that. So that the gum part or the plague part or the uh, cavity part, okay, that, that all comes under the uh, BDS or the MDS, Bachelor of Dental Surgery, all that. So now the doctors are thinking, I can't we use ozone uh, to treat the dental problem so that without the removal uh, of teeth, by keeping the teeth intact there only, we can what we can go for the uh, treatment of mouth related problems. Okay, so that is in general called what ozone therapy we learn in the BDS or the MDS in detail exactly you will go to the root canal so there we understand so these are the other uses I am written at the, at the extreme right side as an oxidizing agent in the manufacture of KMNO4 see KMNO4 itself is the OA so to prepare one OA by some other method of using MNO2 to, to oxidize so ozone is better than KMNO4 okay so it has now overtaken second is as I said said disinfectant already told and sterilization so some uh, what uh, surgical uh, what apparatus uh, whenever they go for the uh, operation no? so doctors surgeon he will keep all the uh, apron or the uh, coat covering gloves instruments whatever require everything is sterilized every patient is different so once the operation is over they will thoroughly wash sterilize for the next operation so that is there so for that they use ozone atmosphere and for bleaching oils and uh, for uh, uh, floor ivory starch so whenever uh, any oil or any floor uh, ivory so that is from the uh, elephants now it is stopped because uh, of the we, we should not trouble the animals starch when they develop unpleasant color okay unpleasant odor or unwanted color so to remove that unwanted color we use bleaching agent uh, ozone so ozone as a bleaching agent so that it is oxidized and color is removed okay and the, and even in the most of the mall, so in the whether it is Bangalore or Kolkata or Pune or Bombay, so we go inside, it is completely totally packed. So no air supply from outside, only exhaust fans are there. So whatever we exhale, that is taken out by the exhaust fans and fresh air is brought by the fans. All these element is there. So there, uh, many, we go with on shoes uh, with different people are there. Uh, so there are many micro organisms may be there in the mall. So to avoid that, so through some holes, if you uh, check uh, whenever you visit the mall, there are some holes on the top ceilings. So there from that area, so dilute form of ozone is sent into the mall. So that uh, anybody due to some reasons, if microorganisms comes, they are killed and the mall is safe, people are safe. Okay? So all these are the important uses of water, uh, ozone. Hmm? Now we will go to the uh, second member, after the first member. Second member of our group 16, sulfur. Okay, sulfur is very soft. Hmm? Very so sulfur is such a wonderful drug, uh, chemical. So in the in the form of medicine, in the form of chemical, this also every chemical has got its own beauty. Okay, so it's a different way of using. So sulfur also finds many applications. So sulfur is bigger in size, and uh, sulfur normally goes for the weak bond of. Uh, a weak force of attraction between the sulfur to sulfur that's why so sulfur uh, we will get in different forms in nature they are called what allotropic forms of sulfur so rhombic sulfur monoclinic sulfur okay rhombic is alpha monoclinic is beta so different names are given and the third one is what it is a plastic sulfur so it is very soft so many sulfur in which are joined it's like a polymeric sulfur so variety of sulfurs are there, S2 is there, S4 is there, S6 is there, S8 is there. But among all the uh, sulfur forms, there are two sulfur forms which are stable. All are stable only but comparative. Again, I am telling in 11th and 12th, we go for comparative study. So compared to other forms of sulfur, allotropic forms, it is uh, two forms which are uh, stable. Those two are what? One is S6, other one is S8. Again, in these two, if you go, S8 is the most stable form of 
सल्फर ऑल अदर फॉर्म्स आर नॉट स्टेबल दे कीप चेंजिंग ओके सो यू सी अल रॉम्बिक सल्फर इज कन्वर्टिंग इन टू मोनोक्लिक सल्फर आर मोनोक्लिक इट इज कन्वर्टिंग टू द रॉम्बिक एट अ पर्टिकुलर टेम्परेचर दैट इज इंपॉर्टेंट इयर ओके सो वेन द टेम्परेचर इज अबव नाइंटी सिक्स सल्फर विल बी इन द मोनोक्लिनिक फॉर्म ओके लाइक ए नीडल Like actually, it looks like a needle. If you open the bottle, hmm? so when the temperature is above nine, uh, what uh, below ninety six, I have written both above only. Hmm? Okay, so above it is a monoclinic, below it is rhombic. So and it's one, no one is able to control. Okay, so it is a internal structure. They will undergo changes. So this temperature is there, this temperature which is a uh, uh, converting rhombic to monoclinic and the monoclinic to rhomb uh, rhombic. so this temperature is called what transition temperature for the sulfur okay so sometimes one mark what is the transition temperature of sulfur so it is to transit it is to change one allotropic form to the other allotropic form that is called what transition temperature so they they, they and it's one so no need to worry about that so only thing is what is the temperature in the room that you have to see normally temperature will be 27 21 only right so that's why so most of the time we will get in the uh, monoclinic form only or rhombic form only okay right so this is what rhombic to monoclinic and uh, monoclinic to the rhombic a small chart is made uh, to tell about the allotropic forms of sulfur crystalline forms uh, amorphous forms uh, how we have made in the carbon crystalline forms are uh, diamond and graphite uh, and amorphous are uh, lamp black uh, all those in the same way here also we have allotropic forms of sulfur in the crystalline form as well as Amorphous, amorphous form. So in the amorphous, soft plastic, colloidal milk, all are soft. Like our maida atta, okay, talcum powder very soft. Whereas uh, if you go to the rhombic and the monoclinic, so they they look like a salt. When you see touch the salt, oh, you feel the crystals. So like that. So in different forms, sulfur is available in the nature, and the sulfur is available deep inside, like coal. I told. So it is not prepared in the laboratory on a small scale, but on the large scale. If you want, to, we have to go go deep inside the earth crust. How we are taking uh, gold mines and uh, coal mines, other diamond mines. So it it is, it is a mining process. Okay. So sulphur is mined. So that is called as the very famous method is there. You learn the hypothesis. That is called patched process of sulphur mining uh, by using the its uh, what uh, melting point uh, principle. So because melting point is uh, lower than the what boiling point of uh, water. So super heated water is sent, which is not the. This is not the first level. This idea. So super heated water is sent through the pipelines. Then uh, that super heated water makes uh, uh, sulfur to melt because uh, its melting point is less than the boiling point of water. So it becomes liquid, and that is under the pressure one more machine it brings. That is called uh, fast process of sulfur mining. So sulfur minings are not available less amount in India. So more in the foreign countries, especially where volcanic eruptions are there, where, where the Earth is known to the volcanic eruption that area, so we have the large deposits or the large beds of yellowish sulphur. So by using the flash method, we take out the sulphur. Ah, I told you know among the important uh, among the allotropic forms of sulphur, so there are two important uh, stable forms. They are S6 and S8. S6 is looks like a, a chair form. Yes, just by look only we can tell. So. From the spectroscopy, it was looking like a chair. So they are named. There is no special word is given. So it is a it is a, it is a chair form. So a sixth. Whereas a sixth is like a crown. How the kings used to wear the crown or W shape. Okay. So it is called a puckered. So puckered is what joining together. That is called a puckered. Hmm. So that structure is there for the sulphur. So among these two, again the most stable is again a sixth. So that's why we use a sixth for for the Uh, what sulfur and this uh, the correct structure for sulfur i have used the yellow color because uh, its color is yellowish that's why using yellow uh, imagination color round sulfur atoms so crown structure or w structure all those names we can give uh, left to you hmm? okay now this is what effect of heat on the sulfur what happens when the sulfur is heated in the laboratory hmm? so when the sulfur is heated how see how it is converting See first, uh, it is in the uh, acid form. That is the ring structure. Many, uh, many, many acid units are there in the powder form. That is heated slowly, slowly. All those rings start separating. Ws. Okay. 
So slowly they start separating. Now uh, they are they are together in the acid form, <coughs> in the powder form, many lakhs of acid. Now slowly they, they start separating. Again, if you continue heating, now they still far away, far away, okay, far away. Start heating. Now still it, it breaks actually, okay. So breaks breaks at the at the at the now again continue. It becomes what? S S eight is becoming what? S four. Now it is breaking. So main S eight becoming two S four units. And if you continue on saying S S four. This will continue becoming S4 to S2. At the end, we have the sulfur uh, viscous liquid is there. So this is what in this way slowly sulfur converts from solid to the viscous liquid. So all these because of what separation of the sulfur units, and at last S2 is there. S2 is the final part of the sulfur. So one S, other S, straight away one link is there. Linear structure that is the final stage for sulfur. So in the liquid form also S2 will be there only. The vapor form is still be there, so that is the final stage of sulfur. Otherwise, under the normal condition, it is crown structure or the what? Uh, which structure? Uh, what? I can say W, huh? W structure. Okay, W ring structure, flow structure. So what this is about the uh, today is the discussion. Uh, we learnt about the sulfur and allotropic forms of sorry. We learnt about the ozone and allotropic forms of sulfur. And in our tomorrow session. We are going to discuss important sulfur compounds and the oxy acids of the sulfur. So there are two important compounds of sulfur. One is SO2, and the other one is sulfuric acid. Most important is sulfuric acid. So these two we learn. Plus we also learn oxy acids of sulfur. So there is only their structure part. So that completes what? That completes 16th group. That is, I think by tomorrow. We will wind up 16th, then we go to the 17th and 18th. So before the completion of this month, we will be completing the this P block. Then, if time permits, we will go to the next chapter, so that first term syllabus is almost covered before uh, what October. And in October, anything by chance left due to some reasons that also will be covered. So you are made ready uh, for the uh, what uh, first term examination. Uh, by October 15, so that we will discuss some important questions from textbook as well as sample papers. Okay, so till then, keep studying. So, I think from my side it is over. So, if at all any doubts, clarifications are there, most welcome for about one or two minutes. Very easy, sir. What is difference between monoclinic uh, sulfur and rhombic sulfur? Structure part only different. Structure part of monoclinic is like a needle, long, thread like. So, whereas rhombus is uh, how the rhombus is there, no structure in the mathematics. So, small, small uh, units of rhombus are joined together. So, it is only structure part of. In the, uh, in the, you recall, please, uh, our uh, uh, carbon chapter where we have seen the graphite, okay, layer structure. We have seen the tetradal, it is the di diamond. Both are carbon only. Structure and the structure only it, it is differentiated in the same way in the sulfur also rhombic it looks like a rhombus structure whereas in the monoclinic it looks like a needle lengthier uh, like a one small stick uh, that, that is the uh, when you cut so it, it is a crystalline uh, a small small lengthier units are broken so that is the structural part of what monoclinic and the rhomb rhombus are the uh, orthorhombic structure yeah next. Anything? Anybody? Okay, then it is now 10 11. So we will wind up. So thanks to Vaishnava Bhashanavar and uh, his team. So for discussing with the, about the ozone and the sulfur. Remaining part, anyway, beautiful part, sulfuric acid is there. So we will discuss tomorrow or in our next session. Till then, whatever we discussed, please go through textbook or any reference book and make your own notes. So have a nice time and thank you one and all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.